Today we'll look at different original films that show German snipers. Snipers are a force multiplier, and with the invasion of the Soviet Union, their use in the German Wehrmacht increased considerably. Sniper schools were created which specialized in training the craft of marksmanship, camouflage, and movement. We'll look at the most basic of marksman training, up through advanced and creative trickery. Finally, we'll see some examples of the German sniper out in the field, and talk about the most successful of them. Are you interested in this kind of introductions to primary source historical material? If so, please subscribe to this channel. By November of 1944, due to high attrition rates, workers associated with the Reichsarbeitdienst, which was usually tasked with construction, were ordered to receive basic soldier training. Highly decorated soldiers with practical frontline experience were used to give the training. Here the soldiers are using small caliber rifles shooting at targets in a miniature model town. They are also practicing firing at moving targets. By this point in the war, it was understood that self-camouflage and recognition of camouflaged enemy soldiers were key training focuses. Also being able to estimate distances and numbers was important. Soldiers who proved themselves to be adept marksmen could go through special training courses to become snipers. The most common rifle issued to snipers was the bolt action K98K and the most common sniping sight was a Henshold Metzler. Many snipers in the field preferred using captured Russian equipment as it tended to be more reliable in the harsh, cold and dirty environments. Stock footage seen here comes from the Europovoche series, number 62 from May 2nd, 1944 and number 92 from November 28, 1944. When it is said that snipers are force multipliers, that simply means that by using special tactics, they can inflict a relatively high amount of damage. They can also take out enemy leaders, instill fear, and single-handedly hold up large formations. The training film is number 668 from 1944, and also some Volkenschau stock footage was used from number 697 from December 1st of 1943, and number 737 from November 18th of 1944.
Der englische Schütze sah im Vorfeld einen heftig wackelnden Busch, hinter dem er den Gegner vermutete. Die Täuschung gelang. Wir kamen unbehelligt zurück. Hier ist ein Beispiel von was die Enemy might see looking at German lines. A grenadier seems to be looking around and has exposed himself. Taking a closer look at this seemingly easy target it is actually just a puppet being used to attract enemy fire. It must look realistic in order to serve its purpose as the enemy is not easily fooled. As one soldier operates the puppet, the sniper lays in wait. Sometimes the enemy is not easily tricked. This moving target looks more realistic. Here the sniper is also laying in wait. There must be carefully organized cooperation between the observer and the sniper for this kind of trap to work well. There seems to be a soldier hiding behind the bush. Actually, an empty can, a helmet, a paper mask, and a piece of twine is all that a creative sniper needed. Here we see a sniper who is firing his weapon. But is that really what we see? No, it's another trap. Also, these binoculars are meant to attract enemy fire, which will give away the enemy positions. The movements of such constructions must be made as natural as possible for them to be effective.
And what's going on here? It's even possible to simulate a soldier smoking while digging in. A good sniper must be creative and always capable of introducing new and more realistic ways to fool the enemy. This soldier climbing a tree is also a puppet. But the puppet even has a rifle that can be fired from his operator below. Here is another firing puppet. These kinds of high quality puppets can be easily produced with the most basic of materials. In defensive positions, the traps will be brought and set up at night. As the sun rises, they will be used. Again there is an operator and a sniper laying in wait for the prey. Here we see the enemy soldier. This time the enemy has fallen for the bait. The enemy soldier has given away his position to the German sniper by firing his weapon. Here we see the title Scharfschütze im Einsatz, which means snipers in action. The most successful German sniper during World War II was named Matthias Hitzenauer. He served with the 3rd Mountain Division and had 345 confirmed kills in a short 10-month period. His longest kill was at a range of 1,100 meters or 3,600 feet. He was a recipient of the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. The Schafschutzen Abzeichen, or Sniper Badge, began being awarded on the 20th of August 1944 to soldiers for scoring 20 kills. 
Kills scored in close combat or general attacking or defending combat were not counted. Each kill needed to be confirmed by another soldier and reported to the unit. An officer needed to confirm the legitimacy of the reported kill. In January of 1945, permission was given for snipers to remove the patch when being captured because the Soviets tended to immediately kill anybody wearing the badge. Matthias Hetzenauer was captured just before the end of the war and spent five years in Soviet custody. Now we'll look at a few clips of snipers in action. This November 1944 footage shows German snipers engaging American soldiers which have occupied a factory complex. Having friendly snipers operating near your unit gave confidence to the foot soldier, knowing that the enemy could be more easily held at bay. The presence of enemy snipers operating in your sector could also completely disrupt your unit's mission. The sniper is constantly taking in information, looking to gain the element of surprise. In this footage, a Soviet unit has been cut off. The German tanks have pushed them into a small area. and the sniper picks the enemy soldiers off one at a time from a distance. In this way, the unit is able to kill the enemy while keeping losses to their own unit to a minimum.